You know, the lighting here probably isn't the back the best on back a little, little bit, but uh, no, this is just a follow-up video to my April Fool's video, uh, which actually went over a lot better than I thought it was going to. I think every year I've kind of wanted to do a uh, April Fool's video, uh, but then never got around to it. So this year I decided to, you know, like the day before, the night before, record my little Windows 10 is the best uh, video. And uh, I was expecting a whole lot of dislikes, which I did get some, but overall I, I probably got more views and likes on that than... Um, most of my videos uh, in the first day or two, which just goes to show if you watch my recent videos, if I uh, put the title Windows in the video or a picture of Luke Smith in the thumbnail, my views triple, so maybe I should do that more often. Anyway, uh, I, I thank you. Uh, most of you seem to appreciate that video. Obviously, I got some dislikes you're always going to when making jokes like that. And again, I, I just kind of, I didn't know what I was going into there. I, you know, I set up the little virtual machine, which takes forever with bulky software such as Windows, um, and it really was just frustrating to, to use, to record, and that video I started off by, you know, jokingly pretending like I like it and making some comments about how great the horrible features are, um, but really I didn't know what I was going to say when I started recording, I just kind of went with it. There's some things that I, I wanted to say, but I wasn't sure what people would get, um, you know, there, there's a lot of little things about Windows that, that aggravate me, some of which they fix, which I went over in that video, like the scrolling, which I, I, I demonstrated. I'm not sure if people actually got that you can scroll on non-focused Windows. And that was a big thing for me. I mean, now I, I use, um, I, I guess they're still non-focused, so I don't overlap Windows. I use uh, a tiling window manager. Um, but it always bothered me. There were, a lot, I guess, a lot of little things when I switched to Linux that I was like, oh, this is great. Why doesn't Windows do this? And one of them is, in Windows, up until Windows 10, if you're, and, and this may sound stupid if you don't really play around with it, but it, it, it bothered me. I have a window in focus. Like maybe I'm doing something in a program, and then I have another window open that's maybe a web page with directions. If I wanted to scroll down on the web page on Windows before Windows 10, I had to click on that window and scroll and then click back in the application I was in instead of just hovering over the window and scrolling. And that may sound like something small, but it's little things like that. It's like you get a you get hundred little things like that and your life just is so much easier when they're done properly. And Windows probably does, does, does that particular thing properly now, so good for them. I mentioned the video that uh, I know Windows 10 is supposed to have virtual uh, workspaces um, or virtual desktops, whatever you want to call them. Um, I think Mac OS just calls them spaces. Uh, and I couldn't figure out how to get that, and I'm not sure if there's just you have to get a higher level of Windows to get that feature or if there's some way to enable it. Uh, so I didn't, wasn't able to demonstrate that at all in the video. But again, the whole thing was just kind of a joke. Other things that I, I thought about mentioning was like how Windows is so slow to detect new keyboards and mice. If, if, you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, go to a Windows machine and plug in a new keyboard. Now, if the keyboard, that particular keyboard has been plugged into that machine before, it detects it pretty quick and it loads it up. But a basic keyboard. On a, on a Linux machine, you plug it in, you start typing, and in a couple seconds, you're going to start typing. On a Windows machine, I, I, I think on average, it takes like 30 seconds, and I've seen some machines take over a minute. It, it sees the keyboard. It says, new hardware found, and you'll pop up a little bubble, and then it sits there and thinks, and then it says, installing new drivers. It, it's a keyboard. You know, I didn't, I didn't make a joke about that because I wasn't sure if people would get it. And, you know, the first time I noticed this was probably about whenever the first rubber ducky from Hack 5 came out, which was just a, a teensy uh, board, which I was one of, I signed up to be one of the first developers. I saw it, I thought, this is great, you know, and they said, you know, submit things, and they sent out free ones to a bunch of people to develop, and I actually ended up buying a teensy board before they even sent it to me, so I ended up having two. And, and I wrote these codes for it, these little scripts, to go onto a Windows machine and have it automatically type stuff, but then every Windows machine I went to, it would take forever. So it's like, you either have to put a delay on your thing, or what I did was I had to type the thing right away, and then wait 30 seconds, and then type it again, and then type it every, you know, every 30 seconds it would loop. And a lot of people criticized the way I did that in the forums. They're like, oh, he doesn't know what he's doing. You don't need to loop it. I'm like, well, yeah, see, these people aren't plugging the, your, their, their rubber duckies into new machines. Um, again, you plug keyboard, any new keyboard into a Windows machine, it takes forever uh, for it to detect it on most machines I've gone to. Again, Go to Circuit City or someplace or, or Walmart where they have these machines and try plugging in a new keyboard or, or even a mouse and just see how long it takes. Again, once it 
detects that keyboard and loads it up, it, uh, it detects it fine, but that first initial time, it takes forever, and it's just a keyboard. Again, a Linux machine, you plug it in, in a few seconds, starts working. So I don't know. I've always joked that that's, that's uh, security through bad programming because it's such a horrible thing, but then like if someone's trying to do a rubber ducky attack, it makes it a lot harder because you've got to wait for it to notice it for the keyboard to, to be detected on a Windows machine. And I, I haven't tried it on an Apple machine, but I guess I guess it doesn't even load the keyboard. I guess it pops up your keyboard settings, and then you have to enable that keyboard before it would work, which is just sounds stupid to me. Um, but I guess from watching videos on Hack 5, you just set your device to show up as an Apple keyboard, and it avoids, the you know, skips over that. So anyway... You know, there's a lot of little things like that when it comes to some of these systems. And, you know, you know, to be honest, I'm sure there's things on Linux. But the thing, thing about a Linux system is that you can change it if you don't like how it works. It, when you plug in a new keyboard, if you want it to not detect new keyboards until you enable them, you can do that. And maybe there are some ways on a Windows machine to, to do it. But usually on those, it's kind of a hacky way to do it because you can't actually change the software that does it. You have to do a roundabout way. Anyway, yeah, I'm just glad that most of you appreciated that video. Again, I was expecting I was expecting more dislikes than likes because I, I didn't think the video was that funny, but you guys seem to appreciate it, so I appreciate that. Um, keep watching. i got a lot coming up, and I hope that you have a great day.